Hey everybody, welcome into another video from Old83. Today, we are gonna look at my bug out bag. Let's check it out. Well, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I carry the Recon from North Face every day. That's my everyday carry backpack. It's always with me. I always have it with me at work. And I've done a review on that. I've shown you everything I carry in it. So if you want to check that out, you can follow the card up here or go to my channel and you can see that video for yourself. And here on the left, this is my bug out bag. If something were to go wrong and I need to get out of town, this is the bag I would take. Ideally, I'll probably be taking both bags because they both have things I find useful, but this is the one if things go bad. Okay, so this is the Marine ILBE Assault Pack. It's a 25 liter backpack made by Arcteryx, and I believe it's also made by Proper Incorporated. But uh, this was for, used in the military from about 2004 to 2012, and it is a part of a bigger pack. So this is 25 liters. There's also a 90 liter pack that goes along with it. I'll show you that later. As you can tell, this is a military pack. It's got a bunch of molly webbing on it. Uh, really useful for things just to hold on to. Uh, attachment points, things like carabiners. This is a really good place to put them. They attach there well. You can see I have just some random paracord there. Uh, I also put a UV glow stick on the outside. These glow sticks are awesome. They're really useful because you can see stuff in the dark like your pack, so attach it to your pack and uh, you'll never lose it in the dark. If you need it in an emergency, you can grab it. And also you can charge those with say a flashlight and uh, conserve your flashlight power. On the sides, we have a couple of panels here and I also have some compression straps where I keep my knife. Uh, these, there's one high, one low. And the knife here is just a simple M-Tech, uh, made by M-Tech USA. And Man, these things are cheap, but so far it's held up for me. I've batoned wood with it. It is full tang and I mean, it's probably $15, $20, but it's worked well for me. And so far it's held up its end of the bargain. And I attach that right here. I usually string these through and attach it that way. And then I'll attach it right here as well. So there's the knife. That's where that sits on the back. You'll see the hip belt, which I have attached right here. You see the Arc'teryx logo there. Two straps. These straps have quick releases. I was also able to make a sternum strap. For some reason, this one didn't come with it. So I attached that. And the these are okay. These these straps for your shoulders, they're, they're not bad. They're, they could be padded more, but they work. And on the other side here on those three panels, I've attached a Velcro panel, which actually goes with the Orca Tactical. This is a medical kit. And on the outside, you see another glow stick. Medical is very important. One of the most important things, so you want easy access to it. And this medical kit is really cool, good zippers, and it holds a lot of stuff, as you can see. It's got a lot of organization, so you know where things are. Tourniquet, always accessible. That's the first thing you really want to go for, usually if there's an emergency with bleeding involved. And so that attaches, i get it shut, there we go. That attaches to that Velcro, and then to keep it secure, it has a single, a single attachment here. So if I need it quickly, pop that off, rip it right off, I can go to work. Also, pocket mask goes along with that. If you ever have to do CPR, you really want a barrier between you and the person you're giving CPR to. You don't want to catch whatever they have, and it just protects you and them. And wrapping up the outside here, I have a large carabiner. Um, just goofy and kind of big. Someone gave it, I think my mom gave it to me. And it really works good for things like a bear bag. But other than that, I haven't found too many uses for it. And I attach this to the really beefy uh, panel or a really beefy pull tab up here. Don't know who Doc is, but uh, thank you for your service. And I guess this was his pack back in the uh, back in the day. So thank you for that. And these just a couple clips. They can be useful around camp, things like laundry or whatever. You can hang stuff up with those. So I throw those on the outside, and I usually have another carabiner that I keep on the outside here 
forgot to put that on and just keep that in that strap there. So there's the outside for you guys. Everything's secure. Uh, a couple of things I try to do is I try and keep things strapped down a little bit. So this is flopping around right now. I would probably, as I compress things down with those compression straps, I would compress that down and make sure things aren't flopping around too much. So let's get into the rest of the pack. And let's check out this big outside pocket. This pocket goes from almost bottom to top, and it's just got a lot of space in there for whatever you may need to throw in. I have attached a monkey's fist. This has a steel ball bearing in here. And these are really good for heaving lines, say over a tree branch if you need to make a bear bag. Uh, they're very useful for that. You can also use them as a weapon if you need to in a pinch. In there, I have a compass, military style compass. Uh, again, military style, I like it because it is kind of bomb proof. So that goes in there. Definitely want to make sure you have a compass so you know where you're going. Uh, one thing I don't really have in here yet is a good map of my area. We moved recently and so I need to get a good map of the area in here, but that'll eventually go along with the map. Kind of along with that navigation is a pair of binoculars. These are some 10X cheap bush nails. They work good and they didn't cost too much money. So I like those. Gloves, these are from Harbor Freight. Cannot protect your hands enough. As you can see, I've cut myself recently and there's nothing worse than cutting yourself, it's especially on your hands, because you're always using them, you're always moving them, it takes a long time for them to heal. So protect your hands and Harbor Freight has a lot of those. You can definitely pick up a bunch of pairs and just throw them in all your bags. Finally, a hat goes in there. Just a hat to keep your keep the sun off your face. If you're trekking for a while, you want that. And if you're in a city environment, you can always use it. Uh, to kind of cover your face if you really had to. And in the main pouch, I have most of the bulky items. It is a big open space in the main pouch and there's not a lot of organization. So you can see why I had to put a lot of things in separate bags. It actually works fine for me because I kind of have them separated into certain things and certain categories. And I know based on which bag I'm grabbing, more or less what's in each bag. And first on the list is what is essentially my shelter system. This is just a big tarp, and this can be used for a tent in emergency and just as a general shelter. So that goes in the main pouch. And as you can see, it is just a big main pouch in there. So next I have a camp chair. Now this is really just a luxury item, but it's a very, very lightweight. I mean, I, I'll have to get an exact weight for you, but this is a super light chair and I don't know if you've ever gone camping or been out in the wild and not had anything to sit on except for like a rock or a log, but that gets old real fast. So this camp chair uh, goes in. It's made, let's see, by Tribe Pro Pro Provisions, if I could read it. There we go, Tribe Provisions. And that goes in the main pouch up on the side. I allow myself this luxury item because I have a good spot for it and it's very light. So that goes right there in the side, right there. And next on the list is my rope system. It is really cool. It's an organization. Uh, I found this from Hedgehog Leatherworks. They made videos about 10 years ago and I haven't seen any new ones since, so I'm not sure if they're still doing them. Uh, obviously not, but I don't know if they've gone under or what, but this is a really cool way to separate. I have 150 feet of cord here. And on one side, I have 10 foot bundles. And on the other side, I've, I believe they're 30 foot bundles, might be just 20. But I can attach these and make 150 feet if I need to using a Zeppelin knot. And sometime I'll do a video on a Zeppelin knot, but it's a really secure way that doesn't bind up to connect pieces of rope. So that's what I have there. That just sits in the bottom, kind of forms the bottom of the pouch. So that goes way down in deep. And next you can see I have these three different pouches. I'm gonna go ahead and get into these separately and show you them one by one. And the first container is, I believe this is a fishing pouch. It's designed to go around your belt. I've never used it for that, but it's a nice, secure, sturdy pouch. So I put stuff in there. Got a handkerchief. Handkerchief is really very useful. You got a ton of different things you can do. There's a bunch of sites out there, a hundred ways you can use a handkerchief in a survival situation. Filtering water, keeping yourself cool. A lot of things you can do, especially nowadays, you can even cover your face with it. Toilet paper, self-explanatory. Don't want to leave going to the woods without that. Marker, you can use this for different things. Mark your trail, whatever you need to do. And next would be a mini sewing kit. 
case you have to make any repairs. Next would be some hot hands. And then I have a signal mirror. This is really good. Use a, you can just signal other people with that. That goes in there. Along with some sunblock, if you're ever in the sun, keep you from burning. A cleaning pad for the binoculars. I have a bunch of different coins, and yes, these are coins, so they're money, but it's not enough to do much. Really, I use these for adjusting uh, various things uh, as a screwdriver. So these can be used as various sizes of flathead screwdriver. Also have an Allen wrench. Earplugs. These earplugs, really don't want to use them in a survival situation. They're more for camping. And finally, these are pretty cool. These are wild cards. So these are actual playing cards, and they also have information on edible foods. So if you're in the wild, this can keep you entertained. It can also keep you alive by giving you food and nourishment. So those round off what we have in this pouch. I'll put this pouch in last, it goes on the top. And in two of the medium bat pouches I have, one is just a simple Ziploc bag. In this one, I carry just my things for hygiene. So I've got a toothbrush, toothpaste, and floss. Those go in there. So that's my main hygiene. One thing I don't have right now, I guess I used it last trip, is some soap. So soap would go in there. You have a chamois. This is very useful for gathering water. It holds a lot of water for its size. And you could use this to gather water uh, in the morning from dew if you're really stuck. Uh, also toweling off. It's a small version of that. Worst case, you could use it along with the soap as a washcloth. On there, I have a knife sharpener. This will keep my blade sharp. Some hot hands, uh, hand warmers. New Testament, Psalms, Proverbs. Obvious, don't leave home without that. And that's what goes in this bag. And in this bag, I have uh, some smaller things. This is, I think it's from a set of sheets and this held like the pillowcases or something, but it has a zipper and uh, you know, it holds some of my items here. I have a rain poncho, a shemog. The shemog's kind of along with the handkerchief. They're really good for filtering water, all kinds of uses. Kind of a redundancy there. So that gets shoved in there. I have a headlamp. This headlamp is uh, just pretty useful. You can go hands-free, so that sits on your head. That goes in there. And in the mesh bag, I have a couple of compression straps. These straps work well with the Molly on the outside of the pack. I can attach something like a sleeping pad to it or a jacket or whatever else I might need to there. So they go in the mesh bag. The mesh bag is also useful for gathering food. So I can use it for something like that. Bags are really useful. You can never have enough bags. Uh, you never know when you need to gather something, gather food, who knows what. So have a lot of bags. And in the last of the bags, this is the larger bag. I have this all stored in a plastic bedding bag again. Uh, I had, while I was actually filming this, I had it in a different bag. It was this one right here. And the zipper gave out on this one. It's a lot cheaper. So I upgraded it. I'd been using that same bag for probably five or six years and it finally gave out on me. So I took the opportunity to upgrade to a metal zipper or at least a bulkier metal zipper. So I have that bag there. Ideally, I'd have a lot of this in some sturdier bags, uh, especially this one. Uh, worst case though, I could throw this stuff in the backpack, but it would be nice to have a sturdier organization option. But in the bag, I have first off a rocket stove. So this is a rocket stove that I made out of tin cans. And it's a little crude. As you can see, it came apart there a little bit, but uh, I did this with just tin snips and I was able to test it and I got about eight minutes time to boil for some water. So that's pretty cool that I can have a very lightweight stove option. Rocket stoves are also super efficient. So I can boil a handful, a cup full of water in my tin metal cup, which you see here. And I can boil that in about eight minutes on a handful of twigs, but also have a metal cup useful for boiling water. And a big reason I need to boil water 
is for these mountain house meals. These mountain house meals are really, really lightweight. They're freeze dried, but they do require some boiling of water to use them. So I like them. They work well and they're lightweight. And in order to eat the mountain house meals, I have this Yuko spork. Now this is a pretty neat little spork here. Let me get it undone for you, but it is a fork and a, and a spoon, also has a knife. And the neat thing about this is they attach like so. And the reason having a nice long spoon or fork like this is so that you can reach down into those mountain house meals. They're a little bit tricky sometimes. Uh, if you don't have a long enough eating utensil, they can get tough there. So that goes in there as well. And this little thing loops through. Very lightweight set of eating utensils. I also have some tape, uh, athletic tape along with duct tape. Can never have enough of those. One of the more important items I have is a Sawyer Mini. So this is a Sawyer Mini filter. These are great because they can do over 100,000 gallons, whereas the Life Straws are only rated to 100 gallons. So this will be a lot longer in use for you, uh, as well as being uh, more lightweight even than a Life Straw. So there's a bag on the outside where the lid just came off. That whole stuff comes with a plunger to clean it, as well as another straw that goes in there. And up here is my fire kit. I'll get into that in a second. And along with that, I have some filters. These can be used as tinder, or they can also be used to filter water, kind of like a pre-filter to the Sawyer system to make the Sawyer system last a little longer. And finally, making especially the rocket stove work is a fire kit. So you need to start a fire in a survival situation. I have a bunch of different things in here. Uh, fire steel, along with various sorts of tinder. Wet fire is a really good source of tinder. I also have some lighters. Definitely want to have a couple of those, two of those to be exact, a big one and a cheap knockoff. And also one cool thing that I have in here is a candle. Now candles kind of like an unsung thing as far as uh, fire starter kits goes. This will keep your, can your, your flame going. So when you're having trouble just getting this lit, you're not gonna use up a fuel in your lighter. So that is my fire kit. That goes right in there. And let's get it all back in the pack here. The large items go in first. They sit at the bottom. I'm not gonna need most of those until camp. Same with hygiene. And then right on top is the shemag and the raincoat. Might need those pretty quick, followed by this, which kind of sits next to them. So those are both on the top there. And there the pack is. It is all packed up. And like I said, I really like this pack. It's heavy. I'm not afraid to throw it around, beat it around, and I know it's going to last. And there's a look at everything I keep in my bug out bag. I also wanted to give you a sneak preview of the main pack. So this is my assault pack bug out bag, and this is the main pack in the ILBE system. This thing is 90 liters, absolutely massive. It's actually holding two sleeping bags right now and can fit a ton more. I could carry my wife and maybe a couple kids in this thing. It is crazy. I've actually overpacked it several times. So I know it's, it's something you actually have to be kind of careful with not to overpack it. But that's for a future video. Thanks guys for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe, help me out with that. And uh, look forward to bringing you guys more content as we start expanding. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.